So forgive this video if you hear a bit of a uh, background music. It's because I'm filming beside a temple right now and they are having some prayers going on. So basically this video is just going to be the review that I want to do about my new Pilot Road 5 tires. Now I've had this set of tires on my ZX6R since uh, the middle of last year in 2019 and I've used it uh, how much it's probably about almost eight nine months by now and I've put about 3,000 plus kilometers on this set of tires in that nine months so the front on my ZX6R is a 120 70 size and the rear is a 180 55 so pretty much the standard size that's meant to fit on the 2005 ZX6R. And uh, basically this set of tires, to put it in short, has pretty much become my new benchmark, my new go-to tire. Before I had this pair, my go-to tire for the past, uh, well for the first seven years of my time riding motorcycles, it was the BTO 90. Uh, the Battlex BT-090 and I love that tire because it was amazingly sticky, it, was, it had a lot of grip so especially in a country like Singapore where it rains a lot and uh, uh, the road can get very slippery it was the perfect tire for, for people like me that would like a lot more confidence in their tire so let's start with some uh, specifics about the tire that um, pretty much runs across uh, most of its sizes and uh, the front and, and rear rear tires of this particular range. Uh, it's a radial tubeless range of tires, so great for weight saving. Uh, also in terms of uh, puncture resistance, it's very good. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, I got a screw in my rear tire somewhere along one of these uh, the grooves and um, I didn't even realize it until probably like a week or two later when somebody pointed out that I had a screw in my tire and that really goes to show how uh, good it is at keeping the air in even, even uh, in a puncture. Uh, of, of course, uh, I kind of suspected it a bit because when I was uh, pumping air in a bit, I, I realized it was losing uh, air at a very high rate, so I'd pump air once a week uh, just to keep it uh, full. But, but it was kind of funny because usually on previous tires, the moment I get a puncture, uh, you would see that the tire would go extremely flat and it would be sunk into the ground. The very next day, uh, but for me, I, I kind of never noticed it for the entire week. Uh, in, it, it didn't look deformed at all. So uh, in a sense, I like this particular set of uh, tires because at the very least, if it's a puncture about the size of a small screw, uh, it still can keep the air in quite well. Now another amazing point about the PR5s across its entire range, this is the rear tire and this thing also appears on the front tire of the PR5 is that you see this little grooves on the side, inner sides of the, the treads. Uh, these are uh, the indicator markers for tire wear. So the first groove generally indicates uh, uh, when the tire is at its half-life and then the second groove is where um, the tire is meant to be replaced oh, and anything beyond that second groove you are risking uh, riding onto the belt of the the inner belt of the tire itself I like this particular feature because it's not something that's extremely common in a lot of tires uh, even at this particular price range of, of tires and it's better than the old-fashioned method of uh, checking for tire wear which is this this uh, it's a race bar that generally shows where the the direction of the of uh, the belt and the height of the of the belt is running 
it'll be somewhere underneath that. Uh, you don't really want to rely on just that because this only appears somewhere along the sides of the tires. Uh, but having this cut into every single side of every single tread kind of uh, lets you see at every sp specific spot along the tire if there is a, a spot that is uh, starting to bulge. So you get more information than uh, those, those uh, standard modes of uh, figuring out your tread depth. One more thing about the, the tire range itself is that in general, uh, the, the tires are made from dual compounds. Um, the sides are a stickier material, whereas the center where you're riding on when in a straight line is made of a slightly tougher material. So I've been riding for about 30 minutes before I started shooting this uh, video and the tires are still a bit warm and you can see this particular shadow is not the, the, the shadow cast by the tail of my bike it's actually a very uh, clear separation of the materials so this lighter portion along this line everything here is a stickier uh, material so after 30 minutes of riding you, you can touch it and it feels like goop uh, once you bring it up to temperature and then this one over here, the darker one, is uh, slightly uh, less goopy, still still sticky, still very sticky, uh, but it's not as like gluey as the the ones on on this side. So this is made of tougher material to to give you a bit more lifespan on your tire, uh, because most of us uh, that are buying these tires, we are going to use it for commuting. You want something that, uh, well still provides good grip good traction it's not going to rob you and turn you bankrupt having to replace the, the tires every uh, 2,000 3,000 kilometers so before this I had a BT-090 it was a soft compound almost throughout and uh, 3,000 kilometers you could see that the tire was uh, somewhat uh, squared off by the time it was 3,000 kilometers but as you can see uh, this is the center of my rear tire on the PR5s it's been 3,000 kilometers on mine and it's still very round uh, there's no squaring off uh, no signs of squaring off at all so I can foresee that uh, this set of tires if I wanted to it could probably uh, last me as long as uh, 10,000 kilometers if I really wanted to uh, and that's for the rear tire alone the, the front tires usually last twice uh, the lifespan of the rear tire and that's a very good thing if you are looking at the price of the PR, PR5 the PR5s in Singapore they are generally about $2,000 uh, for a tire depending on the size the smaller sizes like on the front they are generally cheaper about 170 the rears run maybe 200 220 dollars and that's sing singaporean dollars uh to to buy so generally about 400 dollars for an entirely new pair so they are generally ex more expensive tires but since you know the dual compound on this uh tires means that you can afford to, to ride on them a lot longer before you need to replace them and so it kind of evens out the cost of the, the tires themselves. Now on the rear tire specifically, there is a dual compound but in order to, to keep the, the lifespan of the rear tire a bit longer than it usually is and also to of course uh, give you a good load rating on especially the, the larger tires that are meant to fit on heavier bikes um, the dual compound doesn't go all the way so on the on the front as i'll show you later this side the entire thickness of the of the side uh, portion of the tire is soft compound whereas the entire portion on the front of the center portion is hard compound and that's on the front on the rear this sticky portion is only about somewhere through to the second 
second uh, groove or maybe a bit higher than that and this basically means that it looks okay I'll just give you a diagram to show it to you but basically there is a sort of a, a underlying hard compound underneath this uh, soft compound on the side to, to support the weight and give it give the tires a bit more life so this is the front tire uh, one of the unique features on the PR4 and the PR5 and it's kind of uh, you know improved on the PR5 over the PR4 is uh, as you can see on the rear tire it has as well all these very very thin grooves that is channeled into the larger tread wells at the sides on the front tire this is a lot more prominent than on the rear tire and uh, this is what uh, gives the PR5s uh, a very very good uh, reputation for riding on wet roads uh, especially when it's co when you're commuting the the, the importance of this uh, can't be can't be stated enough because this is something that actually is very important in the design of the tire what they what they do is that uh, we know that the tread wells uh, they serve the purpose of wicking uh, rain moisture away from the road and away from the flat surfaces of your tire so that you don't uh, lose traction uh, basically it moves the slippery stuff out of the way so that your sticky stuff can get on the road now the tread wells themselves are generally a, a problem of course the more tread wells you have the, the less uh, likely that you will have water uh, touching the actual surfaces that connect the tire to the road but excessive amounts of, of uh, treads on the tire also means that you don't have much contact patches with the road so this particular pattern of using very thin sipes uh, kind of makes the balance between having good wet performance and having good grip uh, on the same tire at the same time. On the PR5s I like the the shape the basically the the shape of the the tires on the front and the back they are just right they are not too steep and not too slack uh, basically it gives you a a very comfortable you know uh, rate of leaning if that's a, the best way to put it basically it's not uh, that hard to to turn on on this particular tires compared to the uh, my previous tires that I hate those Metzlers I'll never go back to, to those tires ever again so in short um, I kind of uh, have switched to using PR5s I know I'm not probably not gonna keep a, a ZX6R for very long but uh, even in my future bikes I think the PR5s are definitely going to be my go-to tire uh, replacing the BTO 90. The BTO 90 is quite an old tire by now and it's kind of getting harder and harder to find BTO 90s in the size that I want. So the fact that there is something out here that is a reasonable price, yeah, it's still expensive but if you, if you think about how, how long you can ride on this pair of tires, it kind of evens out. So this is my, going to be my go-to tire for the future on literally any bike that I, I buy, even if it's a uh, ADV bike like my Versys. Uh, my Versys hasn't, hasn't uh, changed uh, the, the stock tires yet because uh, there's kind of a lot more to go on it and um, I don't ride it a lot compared to my ZX6R. Uh, but in, in the future, once I probably uh, move on from the ZX6R and I and I use my Versys a bit more I will uh, buy PR5 for that as well and the surprising thing is that the Versys uses a 19 inch front with a 17 inch rear and is more or less your usual uh, ADV bike si type, uh, wheel sizes uh, so uh, it's quite heartening to know that 
uh, Michelin makes PR5s in the sizes of that particular style of bike. As you can see, if you go to their website and take a look at the sizes. So I hope you found the video a bit informative. Uh, I know the PR5s has been done to death by a lot of people out there that vouch for the PR5 and the PR4 in general. Uh, but I kind of am speaking from the point of view of a Singaporean uh, who rides in a country where it's raining literally half the time and the road is always wet. So this is coming from the perspective of somebody that has to deal with a lot of moisture on the road. I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately but that's because I've got a house coming. Uh, once I've settled in, done my renovations and everything, maybe I'll do a bit more videos by then. So I'll see you. Ciao.